Welcome to Light Warrior Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Karen Can, author of the number one best-selling book, Sensitivity is Your Superpower, How to Harness Your Gifts, Fulfill Your Purpose, and Create a Life of Joy. And if you are a sensitive soul and you are new to my community, we'd love for you to hit the subscribe button if you're watching this on the web and also join our community, the Light Medicine community. We'll put all the links below and would love to give you the free gift too. It's called the Sensitive Soul Empowerment Guide, the three ways of navigating your way to more peace, positivity, and personal power. I know that's a lot of peas. <laughs> you can get that at sensitivesoulguide.com and you can download that and um, just start learning about yourself as a sensitive soul. So today I am super excited because I have my coach and mentor, Marcus Bird, who actually mentored me through business coaching, believe it or not, Wellness Leadership Academy. Got to know him really, really well, as well as, well as many, many wonderful practitioners from around the world. We're like friends forever, I think. Um, and then, and then things shifted as things do. Um, as I was learning all this amazing stuff, like how to speak on stage and write books. And thank you, Marcus, for the sensitivities to superpower book, because we did that together in Hawaii. Marcus was like, well, you know what? I've been called to, some, to do something different. And then he literally used to be a corporate Jedi, got sick. He can tell you that story in a minute. You know, uh, you know healed himself. A very interesting story. Started doing this wellness leadership stuff, this business stuff. that was amazing and is amazing at. And then he just let it all go. Like how many people can just go, well, I have a multi-million dollar business that I've been guided to let go of and start from scratch. Wow. Not too many people, right? You got to be courageous for that kind of stuff. So today we're talking about Abukra energetics and dimensional healing. This is something that is a calling uh, for Marcus and he has been called to help elevate the consciousness of the planet and the universe, if you will, and those who are resonant with some of the things we're talking about today, we would certainly love to invite you to a, um, a workshop that is happening Friday, <laughs> North American time, Friday night coming up. And if you are listening to this and you missed it, uh, that is okay because uh, you can always email support at karencan.com and we will give you uh, perhaps an evergreen or uh, another link that you can always watch the replay. So that's a promise uh, that I did not ask Marcus about. But anyway, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so uh, Marcus, uh, thank you so much for sharing your time and wisdom with us today. I know you have a couple team members here helping out in the background. Uh, really, really happy and pleased to have you again. Yay. Yay. So great to be here. Love this. Love it. Love it. Love having these conversations and especially with someone, you know, you admire and respect a lot in all the work you do, Karen. And I just love watching you blossom and grow and expand and do all the amazing things you're doing. So it's a real honor to, uh, to be here. So thanks for having me. Yay. My pleasure. And by the way, folks, uh, I mean, some of uh, folks here that have been with me for quite a number of years, Topican Healing, the method, Okay, the Topican Healing Method, level one, level two, that would not be in existence if it was not for Marcus and Andy, who, who were, you know, the, the co-founders of Wellness Leadership Academy, because I was doing yeah. something different, and they said, hmm, I think you need to pivot, and yeah. I was like, oh, I do, because I was going to do 10 more years of struggling over here, <laughs> and they said, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, you guys said, you know, I, I, I think you, I think you should do the modality, and I was like, what? <laughs> right and now like that's you know now we have hundreds of students anyway it's just so exciting um it is and uh, so i would love for you to tell folks your interesting story of how you got from like yeah. being the corporate jedi to now being I like was. an energy healer i know it's kind of a big big leap and uh, <clears throat> it was one of those leaps that I was, you know, I wasn't capable of doing in the normal sense of the word of just making that decision like I do now. Um, and so, yeah, I was a corporate Jedi climbing the corporate ladder. I had the right job. I had the right house in the right suburb with the right friends and the right wife and the right car in the garage. And <laughs> everything was perfect based on old world stuff, what we would now know as the old timeline of the old world. <clears throat> at the time, I had no idea. I thought it was what you did, and I was climbing the corporate ladder, and that was the good thing to do. And um, 
you know, I was, I was pretty egotistical at the time and pretty, you know, chuffed with myself, very British word, but very happy with myself, um, that I'd had this success and I had staff and I had all this sort of stuff going on and worked for a big company here in Australia. And then one day I was sitting at my office, my corner office, I know it's so cliche, it's ridiculous. Um, but I was sitting in my corner office and I put my feet up on the desk and I'm leaning back looking over the city and thinking just how amazing I am and how wonderful all this was. And something happened. It was almost like this energy came down the river because the office was on the river, the Yarra River here in Melbourne. And uh, it's almost like this energy came down the, the river and started to wash over me. And for a moment, I put my hand on my heart and I said, there has to be more than this. Something came over me. I can't even explain what it was or... But it was like, I don't know, it was this divine energy that came, something beyond me, which which I sort of learnt eventually. But um, And so uh, <clears throat> two weeks later, I gave myself chronic fatigue syndrome and I started to get sick really fast. And chances are I was getting sick for a while anyway, but hadn't noticed, you know, because I was very much in that world, just didn't notice. Anyway, I got really, really, really sick uh, to the point that I had to stop work. I had to give up work <clears throat> and... Um, and go on this sort of crazy healing journey. Um, and giving up work was a really tough because my whole, all my dreams and desires that I knew up until that point disappeared, like gone, in, in what seemed like a blink of an eye. Um, and so I gave up work and I went on this sort of healing journey. And initially I went and saw doctors because that's what you do when you're in that world. I went to medical doctors, bless them, and... Uh, <laughs> And they took blood tests as they do, and uh, all the blood tests kept coming back with negative, nothing, you're fine, there's nothing wrong with you. And at the time, the chronic fatigue back then, 25, almost 30 years ago, was called the yuppie flu. That's what they used to call it. And the impression was that, you know, you were being lazy, uh, it's not real, none of it's real. So there wasn't a lot known about it. So when you went and saw a doctor, they were like, that doesn't exist. Chronic fatigue isn't a thing. Um, Anyway, we know it is now. Um, so after seeing doctors, I ended up realising that, you know, no one was going to heal me. Well, no one I knew about was going to heal me and that I had to heal myself or at least start that journey. And at the time, I couldn't socialise. I couldn't speak to friends. I couldn't be on the phone. I couldn't, couldn't listen to the radio, watch television, couldn't go out of my house. I was so sick. Uh, so I thought to myself, what's the only thing I can do? And the only thing I could do was meditate. So I did. <laughs> I meditated for hours and hours and hours every single day for what seemed like months and months on end. And, uh, and this is where everything sort of started to open up and actually the healing started. Um, uh, most importantly, uh, my connection with the universe started through this experience and um, something that's so far left afield from where I came from began to appear. Um, and so do you want me to go into that depth of the story? Do you want me to talk about the... Sure. We love that <laughs> stuff here. Excellent. So, uh, so I've been taught to meditate. I used to be with the Australian ski team and sports psychologist of the day, 30 years plus years ago, used to teach an active visualization where you'd go down some stairs, relaxing with every step. You'd go into a cellar and in the cellar was a big movie screen and a beautiful couch and you could sit watching yourself winning ski races or whatever you wanted. So that's all I knew about meditation. I knew nothing else about meditation, so I thought I'll just do that, right? sounds like a good thing to do and I can imagine on the screen me getting better um, so I did that and I meditated oh, hours and hours every day and then one morning I went to go into my cellar and the cellar had turned into a pyramid and at the time I didn't think a lot about it I just went oh it's a pyramid I go what do you do you just go into the pyramid who cares right <laughs> I didn't know anything about pyramids except what they taught me at school and as we know now that's got nothing to do with pyramids but anyway so I just started meditating in the pyramid and then uh, one day, again, just minding my own business in the pyramid, this being walks through the wall of the pyramid and sits opposite me. Uh, and uh, I'm just going, well, this is interesting. And the being says, uh, I'm coming to let you know that in two weeks I'm coming back with another being and uh, we have something we want you to take to the world. And I'm like, yeah, right, sure, whatever. Like I didn't, again, I'm just, I'm sick. 
So this is just a beautiful hallucination, so why not, <laughs> right? Sure. So the being left, and I kept going on my meditation. Anyway, two weeks to the day, the being walked through the wall again with another being, and they sat opposite me, and they said, we want you to take this information down. And I went, this is crazy and stupid, and no, I'm not doing this. This is, doesn't make any sense. Um, and uh, they said, no, we're giving you a gift of the Golden Buddha, which is this gift here that they gave me. Um, and they said, we want you to take this to the world. And I argued for, I can't even tell you how long, ages. I'm just like, no, I'm not. This is stupid. I'm making this up. I'm hallucinating. I'm sick. Blah, blah, blah. Finally, I'm losing my mind. Yay. Uh, <laughs> like all the doctors had said, just take, you know, these tablets and antidepression and blah, blah, blah tablets, you'll be fine. Which, of course, I never did, thankfully. Um, but I thought, yeah, finally, I'm nuts. So anyway, they wouldn't go away. So I said, all right, who cares? Right, I've got nothing better to do at the moment. So I'll just start writing stuff down. So I did. I just started taking thousands of pages worth of information. And I, I actually bought, got out the old the notepads I had the other day. I think I showed Camille my notepads the other day. The, the original notepads, I've still got them. Um, uh, because I meditate, they give me information. I come out of the meditation, just start writing all of the notes that they gave me. And they gave me information on quantum physics, on planets, on the solar system, on, God, you name it, energy. But most importantly, they gave me information on healing and how we heal the human experience. Um, firstly, how to heal myself and then how to heal the rest of the planet. And so, um, anyway, after a while, um, serendipitous, serendipity led me to a whole lot of different healing stuff. Kinesiology was one of them. I went and studied kinesiology and probably the most important synchronistic part of this journey is um, when I took one of the folders of all the information to school, the kinesiology college that I was going to now that I was feeling better. Uh, and uh, the head of the college who looks like Mrs. McGonagall from Harry Potter <laughs> called me over and said, you've got something to show me. And uh, I went, OK, so I had a picture on the front of the cover of this book that they asked me to draw and I showed her the cover and she started crying. And what had ended up happening is five years earlier, she'd had a channeling experience at the end of the five years. Well, at that point, they said to her, you're going to meet a gentleman who will show you this image <laughs> and you need he needs your help. And so she cried because I turned up and I'm that person. And from that moment on, and this is maybe six, eight, ten months down the track, uh, from that moment on, I went, maybe I have got something. Maybe this is real. Like there's something going on here. So I took, it, I took it seriously from that moment on and we created the Australian College of Energetic Medicine and we started teaching this in a three-year diploma course, live in-house diploma course. Ran that for a number of years and then realised that the world wasn't ready for it and I wasn't ready for it. In that my ego started to get carried away again. I don't think I'd evolved enough even though I'd been through some, a pretty amazing awakening. Uh, people started following me as if I was sort of this guru and I'm just like, oh no. And then my ego got caught in a bit of that. Um, and so I went, no, I can't do this. So I shut, I hibernated everything. And I thought, I've just got to go continue on my journey and A, wait for the planet to be ready. B, wait for me to be ready. Um, <clears throat> and I probably hibernated it longer than I needed to. But the minute the, the sea hit, uh, good friend, the experience we've all been through, the COVID, um, they came back with a vengeance um, and said, it's time. And the message was constantly, it's time, it's time. So I went, okay. So as you said, I shut down a multi-million dollar global business and started this <laughs> again. Wow. And here we are. And it's gone crazy ever since. We've put through over 100 people now in the course over the last couple of years. And yeah, it's just we started the right with 15. time. <clears throat> we started, yeah, you were one of the first, that's right. Yeah, you were the, the one first. of the, were the first yeah. group. Um, and I did, I sort of quietly went out to people who I'd been working with in the old business, but I knew was into this, obviously you especially, and said, hey guys, I'm starting, it. are you interested? And 15 people showed up and the rest is now history. So I'm very grateful for the first 15 because they, they still carry the torch as you're doing today, um, which I think is just brilliant. They're still very active, a lot of those 15, um, which is super exciting. So 
that's a long story short or a short story long. <laughs> well, and the other thing too is you have a Facebook group called Heart of the Matrix. <clears throat> Correct. As of this recording, yes. it's called Heart of the Matrix. And uh, yes. you have a uh, very, very active, there's a lot of things going on. You've got the pyramid meditation. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah you've totally. got channeling, right? So <clears throat> tell us a little Log bit about you yeah. channeling the being that we call <laughs> Amid. Yeah, so uh, so I now live channel our mead, uh, and in Heart of the Matrix we do that once or twice a month. Um, I also do it on a podcast called uh, Galactic Guidance um, with another lady called Lenny, and uh, so I channel yeah our mead there. And this is a big step for me because I never would do it live ever ever. I did it live once in Fiji when we when we were at doing wellness right. leadership academy you were there um and that was and when i yeah that's right and james and i'd done it live when i used to run the course we used to do it live with the students from time to time but never really done it live until now and now it was sort of like i just got to do it i mean they were calling me to do it um Eve was saying it's time to do it so i now do it all the time and my rule of thumb is yeah Anytime I'm asked, I say yes. Mm. <laughs> so I've done it on a couple of other podcasts because they said, could you channel for us now? I'm like, yes. And then I'm going, can I do it now? Like, is that possible? And then off we go. <laughs> right. I always wonder, so, like, in the past, you, you know, we, there was <clears throat> some sort of cue that you had to come back and then you wouldn't remember necessarily what Amit had said totally. until after you listened to the recording. Is that still true? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I tend to disappear when I do the channeling. Uh, and I think part of it's a bit said. of a, <laughs> no, I, I get snippets. So I, I, okay. I hear snippets or I sense snippets, but I don't, I couldn't repeat to you back what was said. Mm. I could probably give you the theme or, cause often before I channel, we'll, I mean, I'll have a chat together and I'll ask her, so what are we going to talk about? You know, what do you want to say today? Or what do you want to open with at least? Mm -hmm. Um, and then she just runs with it, but then there's questions. And so, yeah, I rarely, I couldn't tell you what was said. Not, I, not at all. Oh, that's fascinating. <laughs> now, this, yeah. this healing that they taught you, right? A, yes. a lot of what we would call esoteric knowledge, like those thousands of pages yes. you've written down. Like this is before yes. we had chat GPT, right? So you had to physically. <laughs> yeah, before we had yeah, any of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, they taught the Egyptians, correct? Yeah, so, so a lot of the information comes from ancient Egypt and uh, there's so much more that went on there that we have no idea about and we're still quite backwards about, although a lot more is coming out now, which is exciting. Things like the pyramids were in place way before the Egyptians arrived. Um, that's one thing for, for as an example. But the Egyptians had incredible technology, especially around consciousness. So. So one of the things we've got backwards is that we go, oh, look at this phone thing and this iPad and this computer. And aren't we technologically clever? And if the ancient Egyptians were here now, they would laugh their heads off. They would go, you guys have got no idea about technology whatsoever. <laughs> because one of the things they had access to is this concept or this thing called consciousness technology. And the consciousness technology is a thing that runs the universe to some degree, right? And it's not really technology, but to help us to understand it, um, he calls it consciousness technology, just because we're so tech focused on planet Earth right now. Um, it's so much more than technology. Uh, they had access to that. So they had access to really deep healing, profound healing. We know they did surgery and those types of things, but they had way more profound access to healing and knowledge and wisdom. Um, and uh, yeah, a few things happened during that time that then created the fall, um, which is what they, we've been So they had a pandemic since. too? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they had their version of that, you know, that energy sort of taking over um, and creating this shift and this, you know, downward spiral. And now thankfully we're turning the corner and going the other way. But uh yeah it's taken a lot of effort and energy on behalf of a lot of beings to help us to shift and turn around and start back into the expansion phase okay uh, yeah, well okay lots. so the the egyptians um so what you're saying is the the pyramids were there before the egyptians yes. and are the egyptians actually off-world beings the ones that created this technology yeah. or they were given the technology the consciousness technology but, 
Yeah, so, so one of the things that the ancient Egyptians had was they had an intimate relationship with off, our off-world being friends. Mm. So they would interact with them in real life. Or they, the, our ancient, you know, our off-world friends would become land, if you want to, or appear, which is probably a better way to say it than land, but they would appear and provide technology, assist with creating, making things. Um, they taught the Egyptians a lot to, to accelerate the consciousness of the Egyptians, well, of the whole planet. Um, so it wasn't just the Egyptians, it was, you know, others as well, but mainly the Egyptians was where the central focus point was. Um, and, uh, yeah, they had an intimate relationship with off-world beings. Um, and, uh, yeah. They, well, and then now, yeah. now we're thinking, you know, there's a lot on the internet about first contact. I'm like, what do you mean first? <laughs> This is, we've, yeah, this is not first contact, <laughs> that's yeah, for sure. There seems to be a lot of beings that are, are helping. We, now, why go yeah, through Yeah, I mean, you could life? say we've never not had contact. Ah, right. right cause that you would be mentioned... a better one. That would be more true, that we've never sort of not had contact. Uh, we've had more intimate contact than we've had now, but we've never not had contact. They've always been around. Now you, I, I've heard you say previously on a number of times when, when humans were seated on the planet, can you explain what you Correct. mean by that? Yeah, so, so there are three creation stories. I'm sure there's more, but there's three primary creation stories, right? There's the Bible version, there's um, evolutionary version, and there's off-world version. Um, uh, I aspire to the off-world version of being seated in that uh, a particular race of beings came to the planet and seeded us with their DNA and the existing sort of life forms that were here on the planet at the time and, uh, and created what we now know as human beings. Um, uh, and there's lots of different chat about why they created us. If you look at the, um, you know, Zachariah Sitchin and uh, his translation of the Sumerian tablets then they created us as slaves to help mine gold. Um, and this is the Nibiru and Anunnaki story, um, which, which used to be part of the Bible to some degree and was taken out of the Bible. And <laughs> mm -hmm. so there's a whole lot of sort of, I don't know, do you call it proof, but there's a whole lot of stuff behind this concept of being seated by off-world beings. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of reasons why they might do that. One is... Uh, expansion of consciousness throughout the universe and it's almost like uh, it's almost like scattering life forms on various systems around the universe to create like a consciousness center like a beacon of consciousness in that system uh, and to have the most advanced beings possible or the evolutionary beings possible on that system so there's a whole story I Armid told me way, way back when I started this about how the universe was created and what, what sort of a bit more what it's about because, um, you know, she told me way, way, way back when that the Big Bang was not real. It was a bang, but it's not the bang they think it was. And now scientists are just finding out that it's not really true. Um, so a whole lot of this is coming, you know, to fruition now. But there are multiple universes. There was a universe before this universe and... Uh, it was collapsed to start this universe and beings came from one universe into the next universe to uh, to create this universe and have this universe expand in the most beautiful way possible and part of that was seeding the universe as it expanded so that the consciousness can hold these sort of pillars around um, the universe. Oh my god, we could go for hours into just this topic. Right. It's, a, oh. it's so yeah, interesting because I... Greg Braden, who I'm a fan of some of his work and um, yeah. in one of his Missing Links uh, documentary series on Gaia, um, he mentions uh, about how um, parts of the human DNA kind of yeah. went, if you look at the whole evolutionary story <clears throat> about how we went from yeah. basically apes to humans, right? So yeah. um, that they're, they're or, or, or you know, Neanderthal to Homo sapiens sapiens, that yeah. the, the cut in the DNA, there's two, I can't remember the yeah. other one, but chromosome Correct. two, I can't remember yes. the other one, 16 or something. Anyway, that it's yeah. complete, it's literally gene edited so perfectly yeah. with the totally. perfect 
compliment like too much of this and too little of that and we would just be like i don't know maybe you have three arms i don't know but <laughs> but it was just so perfect that it could not have been random is what he was saying it wasn't random it's not random it was yeah. it was engineered so there's Definitely there's literally engineered. dna evidence of we are literally. engineered and now we're also totally. concerned about being you know inoculated with something that engineers dna as well <laughs> Well, and it is. It's, it is off-world technology. I mean, that's the, the sort of reality of it. It's off-world technology. And there's this interesting, I don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't want to call it a battle, but there's this, this interesting play in the universe around the different energies and um, how it's playing out. Just very, yeah, we just be, have to be careful how we talk about it because, you know, we've been indoctrinated into this idea of war and battling and fighting. Right, and yeah. I just I think that's don't like to play into that. Paradigm. It is. It's a very old paradigm. Yeah. Um, but there are different forces out there and different energies out there and, and it's all part of this beautiful kaleidoscope of the universe. Mm. Well, and one of the things that was very, very pivotal for me uh, when I was taking the the program the activator healer coach program um, yeah. now level one now level two is the whole concept of stability uh, yes. because a lot of my sensitive soul people some of you are here uh, are very familiar with what we call ascension symptoms so as mm -hmm. the multiverse expands we can be symptomatic uh, we can have headaches mm -hmm. we can have mm -hmm. fatigue we can have all swelling that's another one all yeah. sorts of ascension symptoms so people almost like on these different chat groups are like oh my god we had another ascension upgrade right and then what yeah. you said which was like again very pivotal for me and i just like wow it just made so much sense was like you said you know the reason you know as we expand the people, especially sensitive people, do not feel good part way through is as we're going from so-called 3D to 5D or whatever you want to call it, is that we're not stable mm, in time and space. Right. And if we're stable, we're actually healthy and lucky and prosperous and all these things. And so the whole, yeah. your whole program is about st stabilizing people. And when they're stable, they're Correct. healthy. Can you tell us more about that? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so the more stable we are in space and time, generally the healthier, happier, more abundant we become. And so this concept of stability is, is really critical in this idea of health and wellness and our continued expansion. And it goes around the theory that, you know, everything in the universe is vibration or frequency or resonance is what I would call it. And we know that from some of the quantum physics experiments around superstring theory and a few other things. And so the key with this is that uh, we want to make sure our resonant frequency is in a stable state, which means that it's more harmonic than it is disharmonic. And we know that we're in, when we're in a disharmonic state of being, we're more likely to be sick and ill and depressed and sad and just feel yuck. Um, uh, and the fun part about this and why I think this is important is that as you are shifting from one resonant frequency state to another, so as you're expanding from one to another, and I, I very much have been directed and like to think about things as they're expanding, not as levels. Again, the idea of levels is very old worldy, old timeline. We're expanding our resonant field. And so as you go through the expansion and you shift from one sort of frequency to the next, you have to go through like a destabilizing event. Now we are doing this collectively as a species, as a solar system and a planet. We are moving from one reality to another reality, from one resonant field to another resonant field. And of course, to go from one to the other, we go through disharmonic resonant patterns. So some of the things that people are feeling from an ascension symptom point of view is destabilization. The great part about that is that you can restabilize yourself so that even though everything else is destabilized, you can remain really stable through the process. Therefore, those symptoms and all the other things that come up around ascension are not going to affect you as much. Now, the other benefit with this is if we reduce everything to resonant fields, and am I stable within the resonant field? Am I sensing harmonics or disharmonic patterns of resonant fields? then what we end up doing is taking out the psychology and the emotional aspect of things going on. What we've been trained to be is very mind orientated and emotionally orientated. And what happens when we are that way inclined is we tend to, we tend to blow things up or we tend to exaggerate things or we tend to get, allow these things to run away from us. 
which is, you know, someone said something to me and I'm feeling sad. And then we start playing it out. Oh, you know, and someone else did that the other day. And then my dad used to do that. And then blah, blah. So all of a sudden, this one little destabilizing event creates this massive sort of disharmonic resonant pattern. When you understand stability and resonance, then you can not see it for, oh, this person said something, therefore I am sad. You can see it, oh, that was a disharmonic resonant frequency that I was, you know, I was there. I mean, it was in my field. I'm going to restabilize it myself. That'll deflect the disharmonic resonant frequency because I'll become in harmony and I will remain stable. Now, when you do that, your mind doesn't get carried away with the story. Your heart or your emotions don't get carried away with the story and you remain stable. Uh, and when you're stable, things just wash off you. So someone can say you're horrible and mean and nasty and bad, and it just sort of, it's just like Teflon. Not Teflon, that's really bad for you. It's just like, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> oh you know God. what I mean though, you know, it just washes yeah. off you like a duck, yeah. you know, in water, it just washes off you. And so the key, and this is what Ahmed said all the way along, is right now as you go through the transition, the, the more of you that are stable, the easier, quicker, and the more you're going to be able to help others to move through into the next dimension of reality. Mm. Um, and so the aim is to then help as many people as possible to connect with, understand, and learn how to remain stable, be in these harmonic states of resonance, so that uh, we can all transition much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was so important to, to understand that. And you had mentioned during the program that I took is that like there are like just going from one ex level of expansion to the next, it's naturally destabilizing to some degree. Totally. And there's Absolutely. also Has to be. purposeful <laughs> destabilization yeah. that's going yes. on in our current reality. <laughs> it may be different yeah. tomorrow, yeah. but um, yeah. that it's trying to destabilize people, perhaps out of fear, preventing people from getting to that next level of consciousness. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's definitely a force playing out around that. Mm. But the ironic part about it, and again, if you understand resonance and stability, that those destabilizing activities are only helping us <laughs> in, in a crazy weird way, right? Because to shift from one packet of reality, let's imagine that we live in these sort of packets of reality. And if you look at sacred geometry, we live in these cubes of reality. And when you're shifting from one geometric shape to the next geometric shape, there you have to sort of break down that geometric shape, right? There's a container we're existing in. And to move from one container to the next container, a, a more expanded container, you have to sort of break down the current container you're in. So, so this destabilization that's happening is that breaking down of that container. Now, that causes a few issues, which we talked about the other day, which is multiple timelines, <laughs> because it's not as if we're all moving across all at the same time together, right? There's not just one day, all of a sudden, bang, we'll be in the next. We're all moving over in our sort of own sort of timeline, which means some people are in one timeline, some are in the next timeline, maybe some are in another timeline. Eventually, we will all stabilize to a large degree in the next timeline or the next dimension of reality. But right now we're sort of all over the place. Again, why stability is so important. Because while everyone's running around going, oh my God, ah, some of us have to be sitting here going, it's all good. I'm just here and I'm stable and I'm anchoring the energy and I'm holding my own energy and I'm almost like becoming this beacon of light for everybody. And you know, I'm just, yeah, everything's okay. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, and that's that's the most important thing right now, I think. Yeah, stability is huge. Now, one of the huge. things that people can do right away uh, to help them stabilize, I know with, with dimensional healing, Abukra energetics, it, there's a lot yeah. of different facets to really deep, go deep dive, right? And we're going to do some of that yeah, on Friday absolutely. night. Yeah. But uh, yeah. tell us about that pyramid meditation and, and how that helps stabilize us potentially. Yeah, absolutely. So part of our nano subtle energetic template makeup. Okay, so um, some of the information that was gifted to me and I'm sharing with the world is that there's another level of uh, subtlety to the human experience. And that level of subtlety works at a, at a really deep level with 
um, you know, these concepts of strings, which is the, low, the smallest form of uh, quantum, uh, below subatomic particles, but um, it's at the very subtlest level, and we call it the nano-subtle energetic template of the body. And at the core of the nano-subtle energetic template of the body are pyramid centers within the body. There's one in the head, there's one in the throat, the chest area, the duntian, or the just below the belly button, between the knees and between the feet. And these are like little gyroscopes that help us to sense stability, but also become stabilized. Um, these ge geometries are formed um, in utero, actually before utero. Um, there's lots of explanations which I'm going to go into at Supercharger Healing Abilities coming up this weekend, so to give you more explanation about it. Um, but there's these geometries within us, and we can do a process called the Pyramid Meditation that I run in Heart of the Matrix, but also uh, you can download a free version of it or a paid version of a whole lot of them together. Um, and uh, it's all about stabilizing these pyramid centers, which are really an octahedron, so two pyramids base on base, and they spin. And they sort of keep us, they keep us here on the planet in this dimension. Uh, they have a gravitational nature to them, uh, and they play a really big role in us existing in this dimension. <laughs> if we didn't have this construct, then we can't exist in this dimension. Um, these pyramid centers, these geometries help form a, a template around the body that the rest of the body follows, the energetic system follows, the physical systems follow, um, and it's this, this really amazing subtle energetic template that gets created. Mm. Yeah, I think that is super, super interesting. Um, because on the one hand, you know, we keep talking about, oh, we're raising our consciousness, yada, yada, yada. And some people think, oh, our bodies yeah. are going to disappear and people can't see right. us. No. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. What, what is going to happen from what they tell me is that we are going to go from carbon based beings to silicon based beings. Okay. Now so people are going to get up... triggered because they're like, you think oh, we're going to turn into AI. God. <laughs> no, 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 not that sort of silicon. <laughs> okay. But if you look at a lot of the off-world beings, they are silicon-based beings, which means they're more crystalline in nature. Ah. Right, so rather than think about technology as in silicon chips per se, if you think about crystals, like quartz crystal, for example, quartz crystal is a silicon-based uh, crystal. And so we're moving way at some point closer towards that. Now, these pyramid centers are helping in this transition because the faster they spin, the more we stabilize and the more we're able to expand ourselves to be more sensitive in a most positive way to things, to be able to read energies more effectively and to transition uh, safer and quicker. And yeah, a whole lot of great things happen when you spin these pyramids. Um, and so when at, in the activator process, as you'll be aware, you know, we're... we're that's the core thing we're sort of looking at. Okay, which pyramids are destabilized? And then asking the question, well, what's causing the destabilization? Because theoretically, if all your pyramids are stable, then you can heal from anything and everything. There's nothing you can't heal from. Um, and so, you know, I spent hours meditating with these pyramids when they gave them to me, and I just meditated and, you know, uh, and that helped me to heal from chronic fatigue syndrome in a relatively short period of time. Uh, um, uh, and it helps other people to heal very, very quickly. So from all sorts of things that, you know, maybe they haven't been able to heal from, uh, just because it stabilizes the system. Once the system's in a stable state, it can do its magic, which is to heal itself, to repair itself. I mean, it's designed to do that. The yes. body is this incredible organism that is designed to heal itself, fix itself, protect itself, do all of these things. Um, <clears throat> but because of our world has been a world of destabilization because of whatever forces we want to imagine, you know, we're constantly ingesting, we're constantly surrounded by destabilized resonant frequencies. So, of course, we're then destabilized. And if you don't have the consciousness like we have in this group, then you are led to believe it's just bad luck, right? You get certain diseases because of genetics or bad luck or, I don't know, because of stuff. When we really know that destabilizing res you know, frequencies that are ingested or around us or we're not sort of mm, not protecting I don't want to use the word protecting but sort of uh, isolating ourselves from 
uh, then we do get all sorts of illnesses because the destabilization creates this like waver of frequency that then affects whatever part of the body and, and then the, you know, the body can't hold resonance enough to then repair itself. So it has this real knock-on effect. Now, we can't take out all destabilizing things right now on the planet because foods are foods and we've got all these beautiful towers now that beam all sorts of stuff to us, right? Let's not go down that line. But there's lots of disharmonic resonant frequencies we can't necessarily get away from unless we decide to live out in the middle of nowhere, right, and just isolate ourselves. Um, but we can uh, sort of put a shield around us by activating <laughs> more of the harmonics, mm. right? Having the consciousness, and this is why it's called Activate a Healer Coach, because we're activating that harmonic, stable, resonant field, that then deflects the disharmonic. And we have to remember in the universe we exist in, harmonics beat disharmonics. So harmonics, harmonics will stabilize a disharmonic frequency. What we need now is we need to get enough of us in this space of stable, harmonic, to then really move away all of the disharmonic. That's the fun part about this. Harmonics will align or restabilize disharmonics. <laughs> so if there's enough harmonic field, uh, disharmonic fields can't exist. Mm. Well, and there's some, you know, some, I really like the word um, transmutation as well. In the past, yeah, uh, you know, word. I had the mindset that we needed to protect ourselves from negative frequencies, yeah. right? And then yeah. I realized later on when, when other teachers in the past I argued with, like, you know, they, they would be like, oh, if there's an entity, just, you know, let it pass through you. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? It is not passing yeah. through me, right? Like, <laughs> I need to have a shield, right? But now I think yeah. I, I misunderstood yeah. what they meant, which is sort of yes. like these disharmonic frequencies, as it goes through our higher light being crystallized self, they yes. naturally transmute Correct. to a safe thing. They'll, they'll you... harmonize themselves. Yeah. So if you're in a stable state, in a harmonic state, a disharmonic comes to you or into you, it will reharmonize itself. Because it has to. But if you're destabilized, then a disharmonic resonant frequency is just going to make things worse, right? Because you're almost sort of feeding it, right? So this is destabilized. I'm destabilized. They come together and go, oh, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> now we're now let's destabilize even more, right? Whereas if you're stable, when a disharmonic resonant frequency comes to you, that harmonic restabilizes and neutralizes mm -hmm. the disharmonic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's huge stuff. Yeah, that's huge. Um, it makes yeah, a big it's difference. It's really huge. I, and just for the po folks that are here live and actually on the replay as well, I'm going to put below, there's a link in case you wanted to dive in even before the class uh, that Marcus is giving on the pyramid meditation. It's a, it's actually a, a whole, you know, a course, a mini course for just $39. Yeah. So thank you, Marcus, for giving yeah. us that amazing price. Um, so if people want to start always. with the meditation, start stabilizing yourself. Um, in fact, in our level yeah. two program, Topican level two, uh, um, you know, Marcus had given me permission to, to share yeah. that this is a very, very important uh, meditation. So we use it for meditation, stabilization, right? So, and yeah. uh, Topican healing and dimensional therapy are just so beautifully uh, complementary to each other. So amazing. Yeah, some of the are. dimensional stuff that is in Topican one, I didn't actually understand like logically what it meant. I just took dictation from source and I was like, <laughs> I don't know what a dimensional rift is, but I'm going to describe it the best way I can. Right. And I don't understand yeah. what dimensional fascia is, but I know what fascia yeah. is. So it's yeah. something to do with the fabric of the universe. Right? <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then you were able to actually like put words to it and describe it in like yeah. very simple ways, like strings and membranes. And I'm like, oh, that's what source meant. I see yeah. it now. Why, why yeah. my medical mind said it was fascia. You know, <laughs> of maybe. course. So yeah. Yeah. Much. So, totally. um, Christine is putting the link for, for those of you here live, she's putting the link in the chat, um, how to sign up for the class for Marcus. Um, on uh, on Friday night, uh, North American time, uh, Saturday morning, Australian time. So highly, highly, highly recommend. It's uh, every time Marcus does this class, he has like, I would say new stuff, but just evolved 
stuff. Every time yeah. we do it, Marcus, it's evolved. Totally. And so that's why I keep it showing is. up, even though I've done it, what, yeah. five, six, seven times? <laughs> <laughs> However many times you've had so it, I think I missed one. Yeah, yeah, I missed yeah. One. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm, I'm constantly there because I'm constantly learning <sighs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. ooh, he said it this way. Oh, I really get it this time, right? So I yes, yes. constantly go to these because they're so amazing. And, you know, obviously, yeah, if it resonates you. with you, we'd like to be an activate, activate healer coach. You can definitely get on an interview, see if you're a right fit. But just, totally. you know, get on there and learn this information. It's so amazing. So we have that link yeah. um, in the chat or underneath this video if you're watching the replay. That's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That's um, great. And it is about, questions. you know, this consciousness expansion is about just remembering the knowledge and the wisdom. You know, when you hear this stuff, there'll be a part of you that goes, well, that now makes sense. Like, it yes. just makes sense. Um, you know, and every time I sit there and go, wow, where did I get this from? And what are you telling me? And just the logic of it, the, the whole, it just joins a whole lot of dots together and just makes sense. And, and uh, that's helpful, right? Because yeah. that helps us to continue to expand. Totally, so, totally. I know yeah. if, if somebody is like, if they were here for five minutes and they left, maybe they're not into the alien thing just yet, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, that's okay. Um, I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> let's ask Christine. You know, and it was, to... yeah. Yeah, if we have any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. <clears throat> oh, it's One awesome. Well, I did just get a message. From. Someone's already registered to join us, so that's exciting. Oh, that's exciting. Mickey Yay. at the event. Fabulous. Yay. That's so exciting. That's yes. great. Thank you for joining us. So we did the... have one great question, which Marcus, you might have answered in your um, description of how this works with stabilizing things. But Stephanie's asking, she's been trying to heal herself and many health issues and physical pain for decades and doesn't ever seem to be successful. So why is that happening and what can she do to remedy those problems? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the great part about this and having an, a deeper understanding is that you reduce everything to one thing. You know, the typical medical model or the old healing mo model is sort of like uh, you've got all of these issues. Let's try and tackle them one at a time. Let's tackle this one and that one and this one and that one. And as we know in the medical world, that then causes the next problems. OK, so we tackle this one. And oh, there, now there's four more problems. OK, let's tackle those four. Now there's eight more problems. Um, when really what we want to do is we come down to what I might call the lowest common denominator. What is the, the, and this is what quantum physicists try to do. What's the smallest, most minute answer to everything? <laughs> and to some degree, I'm on that journey as well. And I'm each sharing that journey with me about, you know, in particular around healing, not so much quantum, but in the, around healing. And I think if you come down to that one thing, which is okay, for you, Stephanie, you know, there's, physical pain and health issues, and maybe you've got multiple things playing out or it looks like multiple things. But what ends up happening is it's being caused by a destabilization, right? A, a disharmonic, maybe multiple disharmonic resonant patterns, but it's creating a destabilized state. So really all we have to do, and I'm going to make this simpler than maybe it sounds, is restabilize you or you restabilize you and everything clears up. Don't have to necessarily deal with that issue and then that issue and then this issue and then this issue. You just deal with one thing, which is, okay, what's it going to take for me to be in the most stable place possible? How do I restabilize myself, create harmonic resonant patterns? That then is going to naturally harmonize the disharmonic resonant patterns that are being created in your body. And that's all an illness is, is a disharmonic resonance. It's not called this or it's not called that or it's not got this prognosis or that whatever. It's just a disharmonic resonant pattern. And I find this helpful because when I bring everything back to that, I don't get taken away in my mind or my heart or any other area about what this is. It's just a disharmonic resonant pattern. And it's the same when I'm out in the world, you know, we're coming up to this event this weekend and all sorts of fun stuff's happened throughout with Facebook and ads and stuff. And the most important thing for me is just to remain stable. I don't actually have to fix anything. I just need to be stable and everything fixes itself. <laughs> or I could panic and I could blow it up. I could get caught in my mind and go, oh my God, oh my God, it's all horrible and terrible. Ah, no, what do I do? Right? And that's an right. option. And it's definitely the option I used to take, right? Is, is amplify any of these things. Whereas well, now what fun. I try to do. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it is fun. It's a, it's a, it's a game we play, but we've been taught to play it. Because it helps yeah, us well, get attention. Addiction. It helps us. It's an addiction. It's definitely a, a collective addiction we have. 
Whereas now I try, and I, I'm not perfect at this, trust me. <laughs> I'm still human to a, some degree, <laughs> um, but I'm a lot better than I used to be. And that is just holding a stable, you know, just stability and allowing it all just to move around and through me and around me and wherever it moves, but create more harmony or harmonic resonant frequencies than disharmonic. Uh, and it's the same when you get ill or you feel an illness coming. You know, you feel something starting to embed into you. Um, and again, the more sensitive, sensitive you become to this, the further out in your field that you'll notice things appearing. Mm. The physical realm is the last place that it appears. It was appearing many fields ago, <laughs> energy fields. And the more sensitive you become, the or uh, consciously sensitive, um, you can start to feel the disharmonic resonant patterns attaching into your field, connecting in and then starting the, the little journey into the physical. And so we can actually cut it off at the past, so to speak, by restabilizing before it actually gets into the physical. Uh, and so part of the sensitivity of the training is to be able to see this and see where it is in the field and to shift it and change it before it actually embeds in the physical. Now, we're all going to get to that eventually, right? Right now, we're still embedding things in the physical. We all have that happen. Um, and a lot of the time, it's because we're very distracted. So we're distracted with things. So we're not monitoring the stability. We're not monitoring resonant frequencies. We're just really distracted with life. And it's okay. I get distracted with life. I've got three kids, um, three dogs, six chickens, <laughs> a rogue kangaroo that lives in the backyard from time to time. Too um, funny. So, yeah, so, so we we've just here. created, <laughs> no, we just have created this incredibly beautifully distracting world that takes us away from that. So that no wonder we get sick or we embed it in the physical. And unfortunately for a lot of people, they don't pay attention until it is physical, right? Hopefully here, we're a little more aware and we try to deal with it before it gets too anchored, but it happens, right? Um, and um, all we have to do is restabilize and reharmonize. That's it, everything heals, everything fixes, everything comes back to its natural state of being. And the natural state of being is health and wealth, wellness, healthy, happier, more abundant. We are master creators. <laughs> um, I love when I talk to our mate about how they do stuff on their planet and do they wish for things and do how do they buy things or get things. And they just materialize stuff. They call in yes. all the particles of the universe and they materialize it. So if they want something, it's almost like they put their hand out and it appears. And it appears because they're calling in all the particles mm -hmm. that exist in the field to create that thing. Mm -hmm. right? Everything that's, that, that exists is in, already in the field, all the particles. And if you want, you know, you think about the atomic structure, you know, the, the hydrogen atoms are there, the oxygen atoms are there, the, you know, all the mineral atoms are there to create everything. Right. And you taught us, which is, again, another very useful pivotal piece of information I need is that geometry is yeah. the bridge between the unseen Correct. or what I call the zero point Correct. field and yep. material reality. And that was like, Correct. oh, that's that the missing sense. link. That yeah. no one teaches that is the missing link yeah that, and that again is like... yeah geometry and stability and harmony all link together right because geometry can't be created correctly in a destabilized state it creates a destabilized geometry destabilized geometry is going to create something that's you know maybe you don't want to create so so if the geometry is stable it'll create the material object you're wanting to, it to create so Stephanie, <laughs> um, it's happening because of a destabilization somewhere at some point in time. Uh, and the pyramid meditation helps, obviously activate a helicoat stuff helps and Karen stuff helps for sure. Uh, but just think of, don't think of it as the illness, don't give it the name of what it is. Just go, well, that's a disharmonic resonant field that's affecting me. So I just need to stabilize and reharmonize it. it that field will naturally reharmonize itself. Mm, so great. I know we have one more um, question before we go, Marcus, yeah. if you're, yeah, uh, if you're sure. able to stay a yeah, little bit. Course. Christine, did you want to read that? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. So we did have one more question come through from Mickey. Isn't the clearing up of destabilization the premise upon which homeopathy works? How is this different? Uh, my wife's a homeopath. 
which is kind of fun and interesting. And uh, we often have great conversations about it because um, homeopathy, 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 flower essences, these types of things uh, are part of stability and do help stabilize. Uh, and they do work at slightly different levels. Um, homeopathy can go quite deep. It works at one aspect of it, which is like he was like, but there are a number of other aspects which we teach in the program that uh, don't uh, spy, sort of align with that. Um, and therefore you can cure yourself, help yourself in a number of different ways, depending on what resonates with you. So homeopathy goes to a certain level, and then this goes even deeper than that um, to a more, even more pure frequency or resonance level. So homeopathy is definitely sort of part of this construct, but it doesn't quite get to the nano subtle energetic template, and therefore uh, it doesn't quite reach ge the geom geometric level and some of the other deeper levels. Um, uh, but it's definitely helpful for sure. You know, it's one of, it's a fantastic energetic modality or methodology that works in the field. Um, uh, it just doesn't quite get to the level that some of this stuff does now. So it is energetic. Um, it is resonant. Definitely. Yeah, but, yeah totally. Uh, I mean, there's certain things it's we great. did in activator healer coach where, you know, the homeopathy wouldn't touch it, uh, like no. d dimensional implants, you know, correct. Not even there's close. a whole <laughs> lot of stuff that, that homeopathy yeah. won't touch from a Rainbow, dimensional point of cells. view yeah Rainbow that's cells. right yeah. there's just some systems that it won't reach but it's definitely a great compliment for sure right. um and uh, and i have lots of great conversations with my wife about it and she's passionate about homeopathy of course but also energy work and there is a distinct difference between the two and what level if you want to call it a level that it reaches and that it affects um mm. but it's still resonance and it's still going to create harmony right and help with that uh, it's just doing it in a certain way that um, yeah, is one dimension of it, but not all, not the necessarily the deeper dimensions of it. Okay, great. And before we um, finish up for today, Marcus, do you want to just share how how long the class is on on Friday? What to expect? Yeah, it's a three hour. Notebooks? So it's a, yeah, totally. It's a three hour event. Definitely bring notebooks. You will get a recording if you get a ticket. Um, but yeah, you'll want to take notes potentially, <laughs> or just be there and feel into the energy of it. Um, There'll be some stuff maybe you're aware of, but we'll deepen the information and we'll go do, there's lots of topics that you've probably never, ever heard of before. And <laughs> it'll all start to make a whole lot of sense. So, um, yeah, so we're running for three hours. At the end of the three hours, we go into question time and I do some live examples in the Q&A section at the end, if you can stay. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Um, there's lots of material to get through. I was talking to Camille and Christine today going, there's so much information. I'm just not quite sure <laughs> how I get as much across as possible um, because it goes really, really deep. Really <laughs> I deep. know you want to give as much oh, as possible. So thank you. Well, that's, that's what they told me to do. So I'm just trying to <laughs> share that as quickly as possible right now. And so, you know, the more activators we get, the more people that hear this information and then True. share it, the more, the better, you know, the more people that <clears throat> share your work, Karen, you know, the more they find out and understand this level, because that's where we're heading, you know, um, there won't it's be, a calling. it's a calling, absolutely, yeah. if you're called, then we're here for you, you know, right. same with Karen, right, if you're called with, to Karen or to me or to both of us, then you know, we're here for you to help because then you become part of the solution, mm. not remain part of the problem, which, you know, we're seeing. So, um, and it's not really a problem. It's just disharmonic resonant frequencies versus harmonic. And we're here to help you to be in that beautiful state, you know, that beautiful, stable, harmonic state. And uh, yeah, you get to make the biggest difference possible to your life, family, friends, to the world clients, whatever it is. Um, and that's kind of super special. And um, there's so much of this stuff that's not taught anywhere else. It's not right. spoken about yet on the planet. It's going yeah, to be. You can't search so this for is, it. It's not, no, <laughs> it doesn't exist. You can't find it. Yeah. Um, and, and everything they taught me, I, we, I made a rule with them. I said, okay, if you're going to give me something that's not yet on the planet, give me something that is, that allows me to follow the thread. 
So they'd often give me quantum stuff. Oh, look at this quantum research, and here's the next part of it. Look at this maths formula, here's the next part of it. Look at this cosmic or astrophysics thing, and here's the next part of it. So all of the information that I share has had this beautiful thread of almost research. I wouldn't say research per se, but it's had a connection to something that already existed on the planet that I could prove was real. And then, because I'm skeptical, right? And I came from a corporate background. I wasn't yeah, in this super <laughs> Well, I was super skeptical and I kind of stay that way because I think that's healthy, mm. you know, that I'm receiving this information. You. Maybe. I did argue about that for a while. I did tell them, I haven't meditated in a cave for 20 years. I'm not sure why you're giving me the information. <laughs> you know, I was an egotistical, selfish, uh, you know, crazy person that drank a lot and had McDonald's three times a week thinking it was healthy and did all these crazy things and you're giving me this information. Well, this is funny. I think you got the wrong person. We argued about this for a while and they said, no, you're it. And I'm like, okay. And so I still remain skeptical in a healthy way to go, okay, you've given me some information, but how do I know that's real? Like, give me something I can search and then follow the thread. And so that's what they do every time. So it's kind of fun, but thank you. So great. We yeah. could talk for days. I know. Days, I know. As you know, so, I do. So cool, Marcus. We're, we're excited about the Supercharge Your Healing Powers program. And if you're watching the replay of this and it's past that time, we will definitely be able to give you some sort of replay link. So just support at totally. caretan.com. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. if, if you, for whatever reason you, you missed the live, we'll, we'll give you, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll give you a replay. And also we'll totally. put underneath the totally. um, show notes here um, how you can start your stabilization journey with the pyramid meditation if you are so called to do yep. that. Um, it's no, really, no. really fun and also very uh, powerful, let's just say. And um, yeah, we look forward to people coming on to the workshop on Friday and uh, learning Yay. more about it and seeing if you are called to, to you know, stabilize at this higher, you know, or expanded state with us. And it'd be really fun. Exactly. So thank you, Marcus, exactly. for your time and energy and thank all you. the work you do. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Camelia and Christine for being here. Yes. And thanks everyone thank else for being here. It's lovely to feel your energies and to be here with you guys and yeah, just connect in. It's just so wonderful and lovely. So thanks for being here. Yes. Thank you all for being here. And uh, for those of you listening to Light Warrior Radio, um, thank you for also being here and we'll see you next time. Lots of love and bye for now.